Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Green Room Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Colin Mitchell, this time in person, uh, 1 a.m., 102 a.m. 102 yep. Um, back from Denton, we did not go to the game. Uh, we went to a watch party uh, for two reasons. First, uh, because the price, I call me cheap, I don't care. I didn't feel like spending money to go to that game. Secondly, though, secondly, probably more importantly, it was too cold for me. Just yeah. way San, too, San Antonio born and bred. Way Brent. too cold yep. for me. I'm not. I'm not rolling in the uh, 40 degrees. What I don't even know what weather what the temperature 39 is. 39. 30, right 40 degrees right now. So I mean, you know, kickoff. I think you know, probably 40 or so. But yeah. Regardless, no, it's a no for me. Not doing that. We'd rather be in inside a house eating with friends, watching the game, mm. enjoying it. Camaraderie. Camaraderie. You know, we were all rooting for the Mean Green here. Uh, if they couldn't get done. They couldn't get, but it was a good game, which we weren't sure it was going to be a good game. I mean, we both had predicted North X to lose by multiple scores, double digits, and uh, we were wrong. We were wrong. North yeah. Texas put up a fight. They ended up losing 35-32 to Boise State. This game had a little bit of everything. It was everything you could ask for out of a bowl game without the win. <laughs> Honestly, like you got, you had drama, you had crazy plays, you had the back and forth, you just didn't get the win. I mean... I couldn't have asked for anything else. In the, it, I, I told you this on the way home in the car. It's almost like it closed the chapter with a loss. I think a loss was needed almost. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, it's finally done. This is hopefully the end. All of the shenanigans of the picks, of the fights, whatever. You, whatever. Yeah. Hopefully that's all behind us now. And that was kind of our last hurrah of all of it at once. Well, at the same time, they have a weirdly, oddly entertaining game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was it was competitive. Yeah. For, for the most part, I mean, North Texas goes into the half up uh, 10 to 6. And uh, from there, Boise State kind of established the run game. North Texas kind of wore down quite a bit. Uh, we weren't sure how this team would look offensively. Um, I mean, I don't know how many yards they ended up with. Austin only 238 yards through the air, but had the two interceptions that ultimately cost them the game, in my opinion. Those two picks were the worst picks mm-hmm. I've ever seen anyone throw. Because you remember the first one, he just kind of like threw it at a guy's chest. Well, I thought he was going to like scramble, and then he panicked, jumped, and threw it at the first <laughs> guy he saw. And so that one happened, and then the second one was just, I thought it was a go route to Jair Shorter, and then he throws it 10 yards on the inside to a safety, Poor. and it's returned to like the 30 or so. And, you know, and then at the end of the game, he had an opportunity, or two opportunities, I guess, to to go down and, and uh, tie or win the game. And he, yeah was unable to do it on either occasion and it kind of was just like yeah we can't expect Austin Ani to do this like I'm sorry it's like you said it's the end of a chapter for multiple multiple reasons here right yeah you, know, you have the stuff the trail aspect of it you have hopefully all of these non-conference SBS losses behind them you have the Austin Ani area behind it. uh you have Katie Davis Manasseh Mose like cornerstone yeah, liter- pieces literally everything of the last seven years came it was like we saw it all flash before our eyes and then end all at the same time. It's done. It's, it's done. done. And so in mm, a weird bowl mm. called the, like the Frisco Bowl. <laughs> like imagine if this was like a uh, like another game. The, the Frisco the Frisco Bowl has existed though. No, I mean not long. SMU Law Tech was the first game played there. Okay. I went to that game. You did. You did. Um but regardless, it it was a game that like Jordan Smart had three catches for 94 yards. Uh, Kalen Horton was a guy who you're like, "All right, he had a long kick return and whatnot but at the end of the day it just kind of comes back to what we talked about years just like Boise State I don't want to say bullied them but ran the ball all over them and what was weird they were almost as equally inept in certain aspects yeah I wasn't overly impressed with Boise State but I didn't go into the game thinking that they'd be great uh we obviously predicted them to win uh by a significant margin uh, but I expect them to be a little bit more dynamic than what they were yeah now, maybe that's because we didn't watch them but uh, obviously, they were a great running team, and they were a very good defensive team. Yeah. Uh, defensively, I didn't think they were that special. Um, at the end, of, you know, they did enough to win, but uh, the running game was ultimately what did North Texas, and they just didn't weren't physical enough. And I've said it, I've said it multiple times about this defense is that you can have all the players you want up there. Like I actually think you know Rod Brown's a really solid player. I've said Katie Davis really solid player. Uh, the other D- Tom Tree. Uh, Mason Richards, go down the list. I think there's a bunch of good players here, but every single game, 
they just continue to get bullied up front, yeah. especially. Yeah. And then it's like your defense is like 110th in the country. So what do you want me to do? I don't know. That's I true. I want to say you're good players, but at the end of the day, as you as a unit, there's not good. And I think Phil Bennett is okay as a coordinator. So, and they've gone through so many coordinators. At the end of the day, it's like none of them could do. Nothing it, so. worked out. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, while we're on the topic, Katie Davis, I really hope the injury yeah. is not as bad as it looked. For sure, because it looked not good. I initially I thought it was a cramp. I was telling y'all, I was yeah. like, it's a cramp. Yeah, it's great because he came up and just was like, you know, holding his leg a little bit. And I was like, and it looked stiff. So I was like, okay, maybe it's just a cramp. And then he stayed down for a long time. And then he was through commercial, yeah. Carried off. And a a coach behind him was like trying to make everyone clap for him and everything. And uh, it gave you the feeling that it was a lot more than just a cramp. Yeah. And whatever it was, um, was not, was not good. If it, that is the case. So hope Katie's okay. Obviously with the whole professional NFL, uh, prospects out there speaking of professionals i drank i chugged four four dos Equis bottles um that hoping for a win you know bernie said we were going to post one final one on twitter if, if they had that last touchdown it was one there, yeah there's one that was one two was two. Oh no that was three i'm sorry that was three. Oh, do we need out two no, no there's is that that's, four? that's your fourth yeah that's my fourth crack and open a fourth one there yeah but uh i was just looking at the screen we look kind of cooked you know what I'm saying? Cooked, yes. <laughs> we look like we had a long day, but I'm saying that just because it's like that was the epitome of the whole time, like just like chaos. I feel like that was the whole night. You yes. had the Austin any things. You had him getting pushed down by a coach. You had that <laughs> and was him crazy. pushing the coach back. That him pushing the coach back, and then you had Phil Bennett yelling at Boise State's coach at the and end. And then you had the, the fights in the middle of the it game. It was just well, like multiple fights in the middle. It of was the game. just like it's almost like what I needed. And again, yeah, it, it felt cleansing. Yeah, like degree, right? like it was like it was like. Hell yeah. This, uh, yeah, let's just, you know, let's just fight them. <laughs> like, fuck it. Let's just fight them, man. Just I mean, fight. our coach just got fired. Like, what are we doing here? Let's just yeah. fight them, man. So, uh, that's kind of what it felt like. I think mean, Phil Bennett was kind of the same thing. He was like, well, like, what are you going to do? Retiring. Retiring. Yeah, yeah, he's like, like, we're up. Let's yeah, go. honestly. Like, that's what it felt like. Honestly. At the end of the day. So, um, and they kind of took over that. So, which resulted in them at least fighting. That's And that's what I was telling, to asking Bree at the end of the game. I was like. This is like the the most I've seen them fight from a like emotional standpoint. I don't mean like literally, like, you know, you know, doing dirty stuff on the sidelines, yeah. or whatever. I mean like watching them try to tackle and things like that. Like they looked overly invested. Like I feel like they should have multiple times the last you know however many years. And I feel like that that also showed me like it's it's possible to happen in North Texas. Yeah, I mean we we can rehash everything we saw the past year on another time, but oh yeah, this no has deep. definitely been. At the end of the day, you know, it, it's a win that you – it wouldn't have meant much if they won the game, like, in terms of, like, moving forward. Like, it wouldn't have changed anything about how well we think about this team moving forward because this is – like you said, this is a whole different chapter. Yeah. Slate's gone. It's, it's gone. It's yeah. gone. If they won this game, great. Cool. Put it behind you. Yeah. If they lose the game, great. Put it behind you. You have to reevaluate everything from a coaching staff perspective, from a personnel perspective, yeah. and just an entire program moving forward here into a different conference, uh, new expectations – and you know we'll get on all get into all that later, but I just think it's a really important note go, that leaving this game, we can acknowledge this game for what it was. You know, Austin Ani played the very a very Austin Ani game. Yeah. <laughs> um, Stone Earl came in. I thought Stone Earl was like fine because he at least wasn't gonna like throw interceptions for the most part, and he could move. Um, they ran the ball a lot, uh, pretty effectively at Ragsdale on a day with over four and a half yards per carry. Um. But other 40 than that, times, damn. Yeah, 40 times. But again, it, this team kind of is what it is. Yeah. They are what they are. And you're just, you, you're you glad that you saw a fight out of them. Unlike you did, unlike uh, the, and they weren't pushed, or they weren't, they, you know, they were pushed around, like I said, a little bit, but they weren't overwhelmed. Yeah, um, I never felt like they felt overwhelmed. And, and I don't think this team, this Boise State team is as good as the Boise, or as the Appalachian State team they lost to, or the Utah sure, State team, sure. or the Troy team. Um, so I do think they there's a reason where Texas might have had a chance in this game. But at the end of the day, you're basically playing, you know, kind of a home game to an extent. And if they would have won this game, I think all of us as fans were kind of just like, you know, just win it. Why not? Yeah. Just, just win it. I don't, And I don't think it would have felt different than it did when they lost. 
I mean, honestly, I mean, outside of them just getting absolutely destroyed. Yeah. Like, I feel like the 32-35, like, it is what it is. Exactly. We expected them to lose. They put up a fight. It was fun to watch. It was a good game. Yes. And overall, I mean, I couldn't have asked for much else. Exactly. And, and everything that we've that we've seen about this team was validated. Like, lost Donnie, wasn't it? Yeah. And if, yeah, that's the main thing here is they got to assess the quarterback position moving forward. I mean, and that's, we can have ample Huge amounts of conversations about that. about that, but like what Eric Morris does with just gestures to the quarterback room, to where it's like Janelle, Head, Earl, and Ani's obviously gone, but like yeah. names after names after names that come in and go out. Does he bring in his own guy? Does yeah. he recruit? Like, how does he want to approach it? I think that's a really interesting thing. Well, it makes you wonder what talent they have in the room because if you're having a guy, I mean, obviously they're not going to bench Austin Ani in the bowl game, yeah. last game of the season, but it, it makes you wonder what kind of talent they had behind Ani for. Them because you know this is this like you said it's a very Austin Ani game it's not like this was a surprise that this happened yeah so why one why was Austin Ani stuck with were the guys just not good enough or you know was it just like a loyalty thing and I think that it's going to be interesting to see moving forward do you know Stone Earl and those other guys stay with the team and we get to see more of them or is it just going to I be- think I mean they're going to have to I think you just have to re I mean you, you overhaul have, you have to you have to reevaluate system. everything obviously yeah. I mean. Eric Moore's probably going to bring in his own guys. But I mean, just from a perspective of fresh faces, yeah. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. I don't want to see the same guy over and over again or have the quote-unquote quarterback battle that doesn't really feel like a quarterback battle yeah. type of thing. Um, and that's, yeah, I mean, especially when when the incumbent is Austin Audi level. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's not... he's not. A There's top, nothing special. Like, literally, he's probably not, what, top 75 quarterback in the country? I don't know, I... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's like top set. Maybe he's like fringe sixty to seventy range. If you want yeah. to be nice, but like, it's not like he deserves like the longest leash that he's gotten. That For sure, completely lost you games that it, that that they've tried to replace him. I mean, three yeah. times, multiple times, multiple yeah, times. <laughs> multiple times. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, you thank Austin Ani, tip the cap, three years, three years as a starter. It's crazy. Think about it. I was an Austin Ali truther. You were. Till the end. I chanted his name hoping he'd, he'd leave. <laughs> I literally did it. I was like, Austin, Odie. Yeah. I was so hyped. You were on the last leg there, and then uh, that leg got chopped out on you as well. Which is okay. Like, and that, that's what I think is, is, is important for everybody. And, and I feel like everyone feels this way. There's no hard feelings. Like, it's like. Because it's not, yeah, it's not his fault. Yeah. It's not his fault. We just can continue to rehash the whole thing. It's not his fault. Latrell and the staff could not develop quarterbacks. Yeah, as, like that could beat him out at any point. Like Jace Reuter. Well, even himself. Know, like, like who knows how good he could have been or could. Yeah, have been. maybe he could have. You know, yeah. been better than what he was. I mean, it's just like. Again, you have Mason Fine for those years, and it felt like he obviously improved. But I don't know how much of that was coaching staff. How much of that was just, um, obviously him just being that talented. Guy. Yeah, yeah, the talent. And then obviously Austin Ali comes in as a twenty as a twenty what seven year old and it's like, all right he kind of I mean I think he got better but at the end of the day it's like Austin Ali kind of is what he is at this point right. in his career he's not going to take a jet a big step forward from age twenty eight to twenty nine I mean his completion percentage went up from fifty two percent to fifty seven percent which is good yeah but not I mean, great <laughs> it's not not good enough so yeah, um, yeah I I think this game was 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 good for to to see those you know seniors or upperclassmen that. Um, and even the underclassmen with the transfer portal, with the new coach, I mean, as much as Eric Morris and company will try to recruit their own team and, you know, try to keep the players that they want on this team, at the end of the day, a lot of these guys are going to leave. Yeah. Like, if I, – I don't I don't like throwing names out because, you know, if people will be like, oh, you know, why are you putting that in the air? But, like, if one of these receivers slash tight ends entered the portal that we knew is either a highly rated guy or has produced numbers – there are going to be teams. Like well, that. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of guys that want to, or there are a lot of guys that are going to feel the same way that all the fans do, where they're going to want a clean slate. Yeah, I mean, they so, they felt the same pressure we've given them. I yeah. mean, the whole the whole entire time. So why not? Yeah, and so it'll be it'll be interesting to see how all that plays out because I tell you, every every school that has a coaching change, every school, um, even that doesn't have a coaching change, Texas A and M, you know, after a, a, an awful season that they had, they lose a lot of players. So it's like, yeah. Um, that's just how it's going to be. And like you said, it is the complete end of a chapter. Like, I don't think I can think of a way that this can be more of a definite ending 
Yeah, like it, it, there, there, there's no ambiguity with anything. No. Like there's no, there's no like the what athletic this... director. I, yeah. I didn't even mention the athletic. That's director crazy. Yeah, I mean that's crazy. The athletic director is different. There's no, you know, you don't have a, a quarterback or a, a player where you're like, is he gonna stay or is he not gonna play? Yeah, cornerstone player. There's you no don't have a cornerstone player. You have the coach gone. I mean, and the new conference. I mean, this is literally nothing is gonna be the same next year, and it, it's almost like the perfect fresh start in a way. Exactly. Exactly. So I mean. You look across the board, um, they haven't, uh, I don't know, I haven't kept up with the recruiting the way that I, you know, obviously used to, but it'll be interesting to see what they can do with freshman classes coming and how much Morris adds from young classes moving forward. Because yeah. I think that's what that approach will have to be is like, kind of just start young and just kind of approach, like take your lumps year one yeah, and then kind of go from there. But obviously we have a whole off season to talk about that, but that just kind of feels like with how much change there's going to be is you're just going to have to be like, all right, we're starting from ground zero, build well, from freshmen, build yeah. from sophomore, build from youth, and try to figure it out from there. And I feel like this, we talked about this a lot the last three or four games of the season where, you know, if they retain the, if they get, sorry, if, if Ren's still here, do they retain him for, retain Seth for another year mm-hmm. to see like how it goes. The way this is, it's almost like you don't need to, what's the word I'm trying to look for? You need to start fresh, in my opinion. I don't well, yeah, know you, you need. Long, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You need to start. There's no like, and I said earlier, there's no ambiguity, but it, it makes it to where you don't have expectations. You yeah. don't need to come into the A C and go. Seth needs to win this many games, exactly, or whatever. You can go, like you said, you can build from the bottom up. You can build that foundation that you and I have talked about the last two or three years. Yeah, that this team is needed, and you can go. Okay, where do we want to see Eric Morris next year? We don't. We just want to see a something different. And we've seen, and I feel like tonight we've seen. And I think, yeah. And Eric Morris, as we continue to gather information, because we haven't done a football podcast since he was hired. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is, I mean, we did the hiring podcast, but. Yeah, yeah. Since he was hired, we haven't done a football podcast, which is what, oh, five days? Yeah. Six days? Like whatever. We've done Monday. Podcasts, the last to, football podcast. Whatever the hell it was. Um, since then, we continue to gather information. We continue to hear from people, and it's like. Eric Morris is very, very different, even beyond the way things that we talked about on the podcast. Yeah. We continue to hear more and more things that make him different from Seth Luttrell in terms of his approach and just how he does every how he does things. So I think that's gonna be a really interesting thing to see how he um A builds a roster, but also how he kind of manages it. Because there's so many different ways you can manage a roster, and Eric Morris is quite different from Seth Luttrell yeah. um, in that regard. So he also has to build a staff, and so we'll talk about that as well. But um, I don't have anything else on this game. Um, if you do, I I mean, I really didn't expect them to go down and score. on either No, one I mean, I literally, so the whole beer chugging thing only happened because on our way there, I was like, I'll chug a beer. Every time they score, they'll only score twice. And then they kept scoring. I was like, all right, we're ready. We're going. That was crazy. Score a touchdown, too, nonetheless. Yeah, it's yeah, a no, touchdown. No, no, no Only field. touchdowns. No I, didn't, I didn't go field goals. Yeah, no field goals. No field goals. Um, but, yeah, I mean, ultimately, it, it was what it was. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I couldn't have asked for much more from this team as an 11-point underdog to lose by three. I mean, no. covered the spread, which a lot of more Texas teams have failed to do over the past – Seven years. I mean, it finally felt like every, everyone laid it all out there. And the and fans, the players, another the reason, coaches. Another reason why I, this felt so definite is it's clear that even though this team played hard and this team, you know, um, I, I think executed at a reasonable level, this team is clearly not capable of playing like with Boise State, like in my in my opinion. I think the ceiling oh, of this yeah. team I mean the, the ceiling Boise, of this team is not where Boise State is. Boise State Clearly is not a good Boise State team. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and they still... And it showed, just... and they still won, and, and I wouldn't say won convincingly, but they, they made it to where we weren't thinking, oh, Austin Allen's going to leave this drive. Yeah, it's like they had the foot on the neck of North Texas the whole time. You're just right. like... You're waiting. Right, You're right, waiting for it to finally exactly. snap. And, and it's like, all right... You know, North Texas still has the ball at the five, has the ball at the ten. It's like, are you going to go the distance? No, you're not. Yeah. Because the team ceiling is just not high enough on either side of the ball. Yeah. And I think that was the whole thing with the whole Latrell era, too. It's like, you're seven and seven. Cool. And you went seven and five regular season. Cool. But again, we've talked about it before. The ceiling that of this yeah. program and this team is just not high Moving enough. Moving to new conference. And again, I want to make sure, stress Latrell taking them from, you know, the one win season to now consistently at least being 
bowl eligible. Yeah, bowl eligible. Yeah, bowl eligible. But um, at least being at this level, it deserves admiration and co- I don't even know what words I'm using at this point. Co- being there's uh, a lot of applauded rumble, mumbling. Yeah, being applauded. Rumbling, sorry, but uh, still, I think th- that's another reason this game kind of showed that it's just they're they're not good enough and no. they, by any metric. And I don't, think which is fine. If Latrell was I, on this team at I'm this just, point, with Latrell gone. We've all accepted it now. Yeah. This is it. Yes. And it's fine. Yep. Put it in uh, the rear view. We'll be able to look back on this era when we're older, Colin. Cool, I can, I can like touch you. Let's do a podcast. I need to go to sleep. <laughs> Yo, bro, it's so late. Um, but anyways. Uh, it's only been 20 minutes. That's crazy. I know. It feels like a very long This podcast. has been a very rambly podcast. Well, I was not doing it in the morning. I'll tell you that. No. World Cup tomorrow. Sorry, guys. Yeah. We've moved on. And then basketball. We gotta we gotta rewatch the we gotta watch the UMass game. Shout Can't out wait to, to the basketball. Shout out to UMass. Let's calm down. Let's calm down. Let's calm down. Uh, but anyways, put in the review. In twenty years, ten years, we'll be able to look back and say, "Hey, remember the South Dakota era? Remember yeah. the South Dakota era? Yeah, that was fun. Good, good guy, good team. Eric Moore took at this college football playoff. Fun Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> New Year's Six Bowl. Three years. There's Eric for Eric Morris. Like, Write it down. Guy. Book it. Book it. And Book now it. we just set the unreasonable expectations I know. to throw this all away. Already. <laughs> Already. I can't believe we've done this somehow. <laughs> Alright. I'm looking for the person that did this. <laughs> I'm looking for the person that did this. Um Alright, that's all we got. Want a sour patch kid? Alright. Um we hope y'all enjoyed this podcast. That's Colin Struggles to get there you go. Uh Sour Patch Kid. Um or Texas NC or seven seven overall with the loss to Boise State. Um on the bright side, they didn't end the year six and eight, like we talked about. That's only been on like three times in this Team century. Seven, seven. Uh, no, seven seven has been done a good amount. I thought. I thought seems uncommon. Whatever seems uncommon, but six and eight would have been worse. A crazy ending. Um, but yeah, this is a great season. Uh, we enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun along the way. Uh, we're back. You know, this is think about it. We didn't do this last year. That's true. I didn't do it last year. You didn't do it last year. I've been dedicated to this year. Um, <clears throat> wow. I mean, I came back. It's yeah. not like... <laughs> I had to bring you out of retirement like Phil Bennett. <laughs> I had to coax you into doing this. I was like, like you fighting know, somebody like Phil Bennett at the end of the game? I was like... <laughs> he should have. Um, yeah, I remember. I was like, hey, let's just do it. Sure. I was yeah. like... I, and remember, my reasoning was like, you know, we got Ren, we got Seth, we got Grant. Like, we got all these connections. We two know them, everybody. Now two of them are gone. Two of them are gone. But we're still here. But we're still here. <laughs> so um, we appreciate all of y'all for joining us throughout this football season. We'll do a football podcast. I mean, I feel like we have to wait until we kind of see where the yeah, portal going. Yeah. recruiting signing day is the twenty first. I don't think we're gonna hear much on signing day because it's Nothing's, early signing yeah. day. I don't really expect much from from them. They didn't have much guys committed anyway. So um, signing day portal, coach hirings. Um, all that good stuff will be happening over the next month, so we'll do reaction podcasts whenever that's necessary. But we we're basketball guys. Let's not forget main sport. We we play basketball. You know, Colin is a hooper. Uh, we love basketball, so uh, we will be talking basketball as well. There you go. If we get enough likes on a video at some point, we'll probably post us playing one on one. I told I told Bruni we pretty much devolved into Barstool Sports at this point with a hot chip, <laughs> me chugging beers, and then now he's bringing out me playing one on one with. I don't want to think you're saying he's way better than me at <laughs> basketball. We're gonna like take bets and give Colin like a six zero start in a game to seven. Take bets and be crazy. <laughs> we're just opening our own bar, bar. Yeah, literally. I green room sports book. Yeah, we're literally Barstool somehow. We've turned into this. It's crazy. Um, but anyways, yeah, so this has been a great year. Well, like I said, we'll definitely hit basketball podcast probably once a week. Conference starts, shoot, conference starts, what, this week, next week, next week? I think it's next Pretty week. Because um, there's 20 conference games in basketball, so we'll be get, we'll be all over that. Um, you know, like I said, we'll react to football stuff whenever football stuff happens. Try to get Jared Mosley on here, you know? That would try, be good. Try to get Eric Morris on here. You gotta build that rep. If we got Eric Morris gotta on, build that that's relationship. Big. Make it happen. You gotta build that relationship with Eric Morris. So, um, but anyways, that's all we got. Hope you all enjoyed it, and we will talk to y'all later.